Hey guys, in this video we're going to be building the integration part. So we're going to be connecting the back end to the front end of our Web3 money sending app. So let's just jump into it. So right now, as you can see, I'm right here. What we want to do is start our server. And then it'll do that. So just run it. Hold in control and then just click on the local host URL. So I don't know what happened, but I think something freezed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and then paste this. So ooh, from pop up over here. And then all you wanna do is paste the URL in there. And then by the time everything is loaded, it should be there. So the split use a split screen window so you can just do that and this there I don't think this is perfectly split so wait there so it failed to auto connect wallet you might get that error if you are not connected but I am or just click on connect wallet and then choose your metamask and then choose metamask and then you connect your wallet through the pop-up, so I just need to enter my password in. So that is what we can do in here. And yeah, so this is what point we were at. And in the last video, we added two pieces of state to track these two values. So let's jump into it. First thing we're going to do is find our two inputs and then we're gonna add something to them that thing is gonna be um crashed. so vs code crashed for me if i i'll just reopen it like that there so these are the two things we need we need to come here and then we need to say uh yeah we need to put in the values for it. So you need to say value equals to, and then receiver. And then our input should, our number input should be value equals to, and then amount. And then we just want to add an on change on both of these. So on change equals bracket. When we change it, what we want to do is set, we want to get something called E, which is the event that happens. So every time you change it, we're going to set, we're going to get something called the targets target. And then inside of the target, we're going to get something called the value. So the target is what the current input is after you changed it. And then the value is what happens right after you. And then the value is like the exact text that is in there. So you can use that to set receiver to e.target.value. And then for this, you can say on change. And then we want to say e equals set amount to e dot target dot value. And yeah, so that's all we want to do there. And then secondly, after that, what we want to do is start with our uh, contract and um, contract functions. To get the contract, what we're going to do is just going to navigate to thirdweb.com, log in by going to the dashboard. So log into third web, go to your dashboard, and um, use view, use the contracts tab on the top, or just hit view contracts. And then these are all of our deployed contracts. And then just click on I think it's okay. So it's this one for me and then what we want to do is we want to copy this address to our clipboard and then we want to say const contract 
So we want to get the contract out of our info that we get. So const contract is equal to use contract and then contract over here. Oh, no, wait, no, we need an uh, contract ID, which we just need to paste that. And then where it says use contract, just hover over it. It says did not find name use contract. Control space that and then just get that from third webs dash dev slash react. So now we have our contract pulled in. What we want to do now is um, see when if our submit button is clicked. So we can go into the form and say on submit and then this is going to be an asynchronous function and then we want to get something called our underscore which is just our event. We don't need it so you can just short it, shorten it like that and then put an equal symbol and then a right arrow and an arrow like that. And then what you want to do is use brackets and then you're good to go here. So this is what's going to happen. Nothing. As soon as we submit our form, we want to do something to not reload it. To prevent default. Since underscore is an event, we can use prevent default on this. And then we want to check for three things. If the address, so so address is not e is not equal to no nothing which is means it's equal to nothing and or the receiver so this mean this essentially means if we're not connected there is no such thing as the receiver and or the amount for, so parse it to a float and then the amount we get is greater than zero or yeah greater than zero and then now we can call the function so we want to use a wait here a wait to call contract so you just want to do contract dot call but the contract may be undefined so contract dot call and then there's gonna be a function called um, I think it's so go to the contract explorer I forgot what it's called and contract dot call send money so it takes this parameter call first of it first first of all it takes a function send money money and then second of all, it takes two, thi uh, two things, the receiver, and then parse utils everything else. What we want to do with this is go to the end, remove that quotation mark, and then take that, and then you want to put that in there, in brackets, or wait, you know what, I'm going to close this all again. Send money, comma. And then we want to put the receiver, comma, a bracket, enter, and then the value should be ethers dot parse util, ethers dot utils dot parse ether amount. And then we get an error about our receiver saying unknown word receiver type string is not assignable to uh, of type any array. We, all we want to do is put this in an array, which should fix it. <clears throat> because we need an array of va variables that we need to pass. If that doesn't work, just remove the brackets and you should be good. Save that and then what you'll want to do is go here to our local host and let's try this. So we're connected as 2878. So I'm going to use my wallets to get the other account that I have on my computer. And if we did this all correctly, we should see a transaction pop up. So let's just wait for MetaMask to pop up. And then here, click there, copy. There. 
So for the address, we want to set it to. We want to paste that. And then the amount we want to send in Ethereum. So that's going to be, suppose, like I want to send 0.0001 Ethereum to them because they did something and yeah. And then you can click on this to see all the options you want to do. And you can request stuff, do stuff, log out, copy your address. And then if we send this, enter a value to the nearest, the two nearest, wait, what? The two nearest valid values are zero and point zero one. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Oh, it's because I put the step to point zero one. So we can say point zero zero one for the step just to make it a little more, more natural since I don't want to be sending point zero one to my testnet account. So yeah. And then hit send. If I refresh that, it's going to say WebSocket request for expected. So something happened with my server. Okay. So when we restarted this, my server thrashed. So let's just do this again. So all you want to do is yarn dev. So that's what we want to wait for. And then just control click on that local host. And then just refresh that. And then just wait for next to load that. And then we're connected. Paste that address that we just copied and then the amount in Ethereum. That's gonna point zero point zero zero one. And then send that. We get a transaction. And then confirm that. And if we see our transactions right now, we say send money pending. And then if we go here and then see our overview and then click on view all, we shouldn't really see those. I don't know why I did that, but we get 2.269 ETH, and then if we go into the other account, they should have one more ETH. So we see uh, ETH on our end lowers, and then ETH on the other end pop goes up. Yes. So that's the end of the series. That's the end of the videos. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And with that said, I'm signing out.